Hey, and welcome to the Regen Roots Bite-Sized Agri-Science Podcast. This is a short podcast format where we bring you just that, just bite-sized topics about regenerative agriculture. Yeah, but Perino crops huge. is huge. It's even more important because everything we're doing from the harvest point, that plant is thinking about next year. It's already got its little buds. It's already got the bud sites. It's already forming the little embryos and the seeds and all the little flowers and bloom. Now, for next year. And if we're not paying attention to that, which a lot of times we aren't just because we hadn't really been aware of it, but the more we learn, the more science that comes out, the more we realize how these things actually function, then we can think, oh, wow, there is a huge impact I can have. And I've personally seen it over and over and over. The way you treat a perennial crop this year and especially during harvest or specifically after harvest going into the wintertime yeah. can have a astronomical effect on the plant vigor, the health of the buds, the health of the blooms, the amount of fruit that wants to set next year, the quality. A lot of the calcium you get happens from now until dormancy coming up into the plant, into the roots as that tree is going dormant. The tree knows it's going to wintertime. Well, it's don't you not think, dumb. I mean, we just talked, we, we just recorded a podcast earlier with, Dr. Tom Dykstra talking about some interesting strategies in mite prevention using higher levels of, of irrigation, large shots of irrigation, a, a big flush, and then lay off the irrigation, let it dry out again. And that, that helps against in mite prevention. But one of the reasons is because it helps to helps the xylem to bring calcium up into the plant. And you know, it enhances I've, root growth. It enhances root growth. But I've seen a lot of producers often after harvest to just kind of turn the water off, maybe not entirely, but really not give irrigation, even that, oh, just keep them alive, just keep them green. We don't want to give them too much. Mm-hmm. And, and I think we might be missing it there. You know, they, they need a chance to recuperate. And so considering large, larger water cycles with certain applications in order to bring that calcium in and have that good hardwood growth, have yep shorter inner nodes and, and, and better hardwood. Well, as that tree is going into the fall, it knows it's going into the wintertime. It knows right. it's going into a dormant season. So what does it do? Just like an animal, just like a bear, it's like I need to bring in carbohydrates because yeah, exactly. it's storing that in the storing the carbohydrates and those energy as well as all those minerals in its tissue. Because, I mean, a simple experiment you can do on a tree, for example, an apple or a cherry, um, it's easier with an apple. Not necessarily easier, but it's fun. It seems like apples have more carbon stored in their tissue. And you can take a pruning um, in you know early spring that hasn't budded out yet, and you can bring it in the office, stick it in a jar of water, and that stick that is not connected to the tree anymore, it's not connected to the roots, in a warm environment with some water just to keep that thing hydrated, because it'll osmotically absorb that as it warms up, that tissue warms up, it will, the buds will swell, the buds will open, the flowers will come out. And I have seen on a stick that's half inch or three quarter in diameter, I've seen two inches of shoot growth of leaves come out of that tissue before that stick, before the energy ran out and it didn't have any more because it wasn't connected to the tree, it wasn't connected to the vine. So that just shows how much energy is stored in the the tissue itself of that perennial tree, whether yeah, you know, wow. specifically this is a specific a tree, not just maybe not a bush, but that's amazing. So that yeah. means that that had that last fall before it went into the winter time because mm. there's not a lot of root yeah. activity in the winter time. There's not a lot of things happening. There's not stuff flowing up and down the plant. Right. It's not actively growing. So that means the more you enable that tree to recover like we discovered earlier, going into the fall, the more energy, the more minerals, the yeah. more carbohydrates are going to be stored in that plant tissue. So that plant's going to come out in the spring a much healthier, which is a big, big deal. So, I mean, we can, we can briefly discuss some of, the, some of the things that we're talking about, what we, what we apply. We apply beneficial biology in both microbial teas, brood teas, or or just high quality inoculum. Um, we we really like to put on an exogenous, you know, microbial food source. It's going to be your your soluble carbon is going to be things like amino acids, carbohydrates, lipids, um, 
sugars and then and then macros we, we want to look at some of those macronutrients some things like calcium and phosphorus um and boron mm-hmm. to really initiate and drive the uptake of those those nutrients and minerals into yep. into the plant to to drive recovery and to increase root growth tip or root tip growth um and so you know again as we we often discuss it's you know it, we have our system, our methods, our products that we use um, for these, but they differ depending on you, depending on the crop you're growing, and and where you where you're at, and how and your different applications. So, um, it's it. Forgive us for being a bit broad or general in that, but here at Swellcraft, we do our best to tailor to take our tools and our experience with management and tailor it to your your crop but also just where you at where you're at in your regenerative journey if you will if you're new to regenerative agriculture um or you've been here for a long time and so uh we just wanted to take an opportunity to record this to to get to just get us all thinking about fall and to not you know it's just so easy you know it's it agriculture is is such a breakneck situation in the summer by the time we hit the end we're like oh can we just coast to the finish but you know we really want to finish well and we do i really think you're right we want to lay the foundation for next year this year and if we put just a little more effort in now pay a little more attention and invest now we will reap those benefits and dividends in the growing season when things are hectic when it's hard to keep up and the truth of it is we can. We're investing and building an account, a bank account, a reserve kind of, if you will, so that we don't, so that it's not so demanding and we're not trying to meet those demands um, in the growing season. So we do, we have, we have dry, um, we have dry mineral and carbon supplements or, or not supplements, but products that we can apply dry spread in the fall as well as liquid um, exogenous food sources. So um, really encourage you, please give us a call, reach out. Um, inquire more about what that looks like and um, we'd really like to do our best to to talk and help you to build a better foundation now um, for next year so that when we get into the next growing season you know, we know we know we've we've done all we can and we've got a firm foundation to stand on yep and one of the things i think i guess that i would like to mention one of the main important reasons that these thinking about things in the fall, specifically from a soil health standpoint, really comes back to microbiology. Because you can put minerals on in the fall, and that's great. That's awesome. And But re- ultimately, a lot of the reason that we're paying attention to is trying to stimulate the living side of the soil in the fall is because they're ultimately what's responsible for a lot of our yeah. mineral availability, our nutrient availability, our mineralization, the crop residue breakdown and or storing nutrients for next year. Yeah. And so it really comes back to the organisms. That's yeah. ultimately, yes, we put down minerals. Yes, we put down, you know, calcium and phosphorus and, you know, compost yeah. and things like but, that. But, but even why? when it comes to compost, it's like, depending on the compost source, you know, if the soil is not active or that compost is not super active from a microbial standpoint, the nutrients tied up within that compost or the carbon and the lignin and cellulose that's in the, within that compost source can be just be inert and just sit there yeah. and oxidize and not actually break down and become available. So we want to make sure that we're stimulating the living portion yeah. of the soil because those little guys, that's our workforce. They're the ones that are responsible for releasing nutrients and breaking things down capturing, holding on to things like nitrogen yeah, that doesn't, you are not allowing it to leach or volatilize. Um, and as well as the whole pathogen part that I talked about earlier. Um, so that's ultimately one of the biggest reasons that we focus on this is those living portion, because they are so important when it comes to the soil health. And another aspect that we think about too, is just the actual, um, movement of carbohydrates up into plants and helping them be more winter hardy. That's a whole nother yeah. topic that these organisms yeah, are responsible right. for and minerals like are responsible for. Exactly. Yeah. They'll raise the temperature. Their little bug bodies do that. It's, it's incredible. Um, and so that can also affect potentially next year when your soil warms up. If you have an active system with a lot of healthy little guys and you put food out there for them, 
next spring, your soils could potentially warm up sooner. Yeah. So that you can get a head start. Well, it might seem to some like, oh, am, I, am, I, am I really making a difference if I'm putting on however many gallons of this or that? Is it really actually going to make a difference? And, you know, you can do the math and the math is, you know, I've done the math. It's significant, small but significant, even compared to Exudate. But the truth of it is, we, we, but we see differences. We see, we see progress using it regularly. And this is a big one because if, if exudates are falling, if plant if there are more residues that we want to break down that are lignified, that all takes energy. And so energy is extremely important. And to give that soil, those microbes, a boost in energy, yep. to really in, in, infuse some energy into the system at the last time we finally can before we go in, like you're saying, can increase winter hardiness, yep. can it can increase regreen and and the plant charging out of the, out in the spring, reduce disease. If if you're if you if you're dealing with a crop where you're putting on any fall applied nitrogen, can tie it up in pseudo. Those little bugs will eat nitrogen and carbon, and they make amino acids. They're they're form, they make proteins, and, and it's available but not water soluble. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, yeah, we just continue to see improvement from from these practices. Hey, thanks for joining us for our Regen Roots podcast. Again, if you have comments, questions, or ideas, things you want us to cover, please do us a favor, comment down below and engage with us. Tell us what you think. We would like to we like to do our best. You know, they have what's called the curse of knowledge. And sometimes at Soilcraft, we forget some things that we're really taking for granted. So please drop us a line, make suggestions in the comments on topics you would like covered. Please visit our website, www.soilcraft.com and our full-length podcast, the Regenerative Agronomy Podcast, both here on YouTube and on Spotify.